In this video, I'm going to show you how to make maps in GoBox. So to enter the map maker, you want to first click on play and then choose the create map option. From in here, you want to click on the new project button and we're going to enter our map name right here. And once you've done that, you can enter the description. And once you've done that, you can <laughs> click on the create map button. So right now I've been transported into the map maker and I'm on PC. So I'm going to tell you the PC controls. So if you hold down right click anywhere on this part of the screen, and then drag your cursor around, you will be able to look all around the map. You can use the WASD keys to move around the map. And as you guys can see right here, we've already got the skybox set up for us. And right here, this flow is actually fake, I believe. It's more like a guide point for when you want to start building your map. So the first thing that I want to do is place down a cube. So I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, a six-sided cube has just spawned in at the point where I was looking at. Now right here we've got three different options. I don't really know what they're called actually. And you can select all three of them. So in the first one right here, this one will allow me to move the cube around. So on this cube, as you can see, we've got these different colored circles and I can click on any of them and drag them around. And as you can see, when I click on this green one right here, I can move this cube up and down. When I click on this red one right here, I can move this side to side in this angle and when I click on the blue one right here once again I can move it side to side in this angle. Then with the second set of controls right here I can grab onto this red circle and rotate it in this angle. I grab onto the green circle and I can rotate it in another angle and with the blue one once again I can rotate it in another angle. Then finally we've got this line right here and with this one you can actually resize the cube. You can choose its length, its height and its length in the other angle once again. So the first thing we'll want to do in a map is actually make a large flow. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually get rid of this cube. So I'm just gonna click on the delete option right here. Now I'm gonna spawn in another cube. Now I'm gonna select the resize option and I'm just gonna make it like super long from each direction. And I might have to zoom out sometimes and pull it apart from higher up. And now as you can see, we've made a small little flow. Actually, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. I think this should be enough. Next, we want our flow to, well, actually look like a flow. Now, right here, when I go close to these tiles, you can see, well, that they're actually supposed to be like tiles. That's the texture that they have. So when I click on this option right here, I can turn this into water, for example. Then I can also turn it into acid, concrete, black bricks etc. So there's a whole bunch of options here and I think I'll go with regular grass for my ground right here. Now we're going to go for a quick play test on this map and I'm going to click on this deselect option right here so I stop choosing this particular tile. Then I'm going to click on the spawn button right here and as you can see it spawned the silhouette of a go doll. And this will also give you an idea of the size of the map that you've created. And so when I click on the playtest button right here, I'm going to spawn in place of this go doll. So let's click on that right now. And here I am. Now as I'm walking around, you might hear something that sounds a little bit off. Like I'm walking on grass, but why does it sound like I'm walking and running on concrete instead? So let's change that, shall we? So if I click on the delete button right now, I'll exit the playtest. Now I'm going to zoom out. Now while aiming at this cube, I'm going to press the select button. And right here in the second option, it says concrete. So I'm going to scroll down a bit and I'm going to click all the way on water. Now let's start the playtest again and see what happens. So right now, I've actually made this set of tiles to behave like water by choosing the water option right here and now i can actually swim in the grass that's kind of crazy right let's end the play test and now as you can see the tile looks entirely like water so instead of the water option right here i'm going to click on grass right now and i'm going to start the play test once again and as you can see everything is back to looking like grass once again and when i walk on it it actually behaves like grass as well. I can hear the grassy sounds while walking and running on it. 
now let's end the playtest once again so yeah hopefully i've been able to explain that this little setting right here will make your tiles behave in a certain manner which is typical with what is written right here now we've got this third setting right here the first option gives us x y tiling the second option gives us y x tiling and as you can see when i switch between the options the textures change a little bit so if i'm not wrong all this does is change the angle in which the textures are placed then with the third option we can click on stretch right here so right here i believe is what one texture of the grass looks like and what the game has now done is it stretched it over the entirety of this cube i'm going to click on play test and as you can see it looks very unnatural and you know like a low graphics kind of thing so of course i'm gonna set it back to xy tiling and this now looks like a whole lot more natural i should say okay so now that we've got the basics down it's time to start actually creating a map so one thing that's quite typical in most of the maps in gobox is a wall that surrounds the entirety of our playground so i think i should start with that so i'm going to come in one corner of the map right here i'm going to deselect this cube and we're going to spawn in another cube right here. I'm going to select the stretch option and stretch it all across the map. Now I've made the wall on one side of the map, but I need it to look a little bit taller. So I'm going to click on the green button right here and pull it a little upwards. So the wall is a lot more higher right now. Now I'm going to hover over this wall once again and click on the duplicate option. Now I'm going to click on the move option right here. And I'm going to move the duplicated wall over to the other side of the map. Let me just place it carefully around here. And there we go. Now we've got two walls on the opposite end of each other. Now I'm going to make one more right here. And you can choose to be as careful as you want so that the tiles don't look too glitched out and mismatched right here. Now let's duplicate this as well. And there we go, we've got another two walls on the opposite sides of each other. Now let me start the play test. And right now it kind of looks like I'm in the flat grass map, right? Like I can't get past this wall now. So that's pretty cool. Now that that's done, let's give a texture to these walls. They don't really look very good while just being regularly tiled. And remember, you can always see what cube you've selected by looking at the spears which are placed on it like i can tell that i'm not selected on this one right here because the spears are on this little wall right here so for the wall i'm going to go with dark concrete and yeah this sort of looks like what i want the wall to look like now i'm going to deselect that cube select another one while looking at it and choose dark concrete for this as well now I'll do the same for the other ones as well. And there we have it. I've chosen this new texture for all of my walls. This map looks a little bit more professional now. To save your project, you want to click on this project button right here and simply click on save project. Now our skybox looks pretty neat, like it's a blue sky, it's a bit cloudy. But what if I wanted to change this? To do that, we're going to click on the settings button right here. And we've got the skyboxes option right here. So I'm going to click on it and from in here we've got a whole bunch of different options. I'm just going to choose night right here. So right now even though it's night time as you can see on the grass and on my hands it does look kind of daytime in general. So to change that we're going to go to the settings menu again and right here we've got the skylight intensity slider. So let me slide that down to about halfway and as you might have noticed in the background the map has become a little bit darker and you can see the grass and even my hands and my RCV2 have become a bit darker. Now let me turn down the skylight all the way. And now in the playtest you can see that everything is a whole lot more darker. So if you want to create something dark and spooky, that's the slider that you're going to want to mess around with. Okay guys, so next up I wanted to show you about the fog end and fog start and the colors of the skybox but if i'm being very honest i couldn't figure it out myself 
So hopefully someone in the comment section will be able to show you something about that. But yeah, for right now, this is the map we've created. And so as you know, we've got four walls right here. But what if we wanted one wall to be present, but be invisible at the same time, you know, like an invisible wall. So that's what we've got this visible toggle for right here. So once I've selected this wall, I click on the visible option. And right now this wall is invisible, although you can still see it while editing the map. But while clicking on the play test option, as you can see the wall is now invisible. Although I'd just say that the wall isn't even present, so to speak. But when I try to run off this map, you can see that I have collided into this invisible wall. So yeah, if you want to make like a super large map and you don't want to put like walls all around it, you want to add these invisible walls so that players don't just fall off the edge of it. Let me turn that back to visible. Next up, we've got the collision toggle right here. So as I've already told you guys, I can walk into this wall and when I do, I sort of collide with it. It blocks my path. But what if I wanted this wall to exist and be visible, but also not actually block my path? What if I wanted to walk straight to this wall? So for that, once I've selected this wall in the editor, I'm going to click on the collisions toggle right here. And that will turn off collisions for it. So now when I enter the playtest and I run into the wall, I simply run straight past it and fall into the void. Goodbye, cruel world! So yeah, that's something that can come in useful for your map sometimes. If you want to hide some easter eggs, or if you want to create something like a door, or you know, something like that. I'm gonna turn collisions back on for this wall. Now next up, we've got this gravity toggle, and this is a bit funky. I'm not really sure what the purpose of it is, to be honest. So I've selected the ground right here, and you know, when I click on the playtest, everything is normal. But when I click on the gravity toggle right here and then start the playtest, the ground is actually affected by gravity and falls down into the void. Only the walls remain up there. So I'm falling down along with the grass, I guess. Okay, so let me turn off gravity for the ground. We actually need to like stand on it. Let me select this wall right here and turn on gravity for it instead. And as you can see, the wall still exists right here and I can walk into it. And now, interestingly enough, I can actually grab it with the RCV2 and, you know, do whatever I want with it. I can just uh, drop it right here if I wanted to. And it's just sort of a block right now. It is an interactable part of the map. And I can even throw it down into the void right here. Goodbye, wall! You won't be missed. Now if I grab onto this other wall right here, you can see it's not really interactable or anything like that. The same with the ground. So if you want to make like a destructible map or something like that, or like even a cool intro for your map where like things just break around the player and fall down near him, then you can use this gravity toggle right here. I'm going to turn it off for now. Okay, so I've covered the basics of this tool. So now let's actually get to, you know, like making a structure in this map. So I'm going to go in the center right here and spawn in a cube. Let's make it a little bit biggest. So I've made it kind of wide. Now let's make it a bit tall as well. You know, let's make it resemble the legacy tower a little bit. Let's worry about the textures later. Now let's make a way to get up this tower. So I'm going to spawn in another cube. I'm going to make this cube a little bit of a long boy, I suppose. <laughs> and also let's make it almost as wide as the tower itself. Now let's choose the rotate option and let's rotate it so that it slants towards the tower. Let's make it in a way that, you know, my player character will actually be able to climb it. And I'll also move it a bit towards the top. Okay, that's about what I want. Let me just save up a bit of the top right here. Okay, that's good enough for me. Now I'll also make it a bit longer and put it straight into the ground right there. Now let's choose a texture. Can I make it metallic? I guess I can. There we go. Yeah, so this texture is obviously not the ideal choice, but this is just a tutorial, so I'm not paying too much attention to that. 
It sounds like concrete though when I'm walking on top of it. So since it sounds like concrete, I'm gonna click on this option right here and I'm gonna choose metal. And as you guys know, the legacy tower in the game as a ladder which allows you to ascend it besides the slope as well. So I'm gonna add another cube right here and I'm going to make it stand along the length of the tower. Now I'm going to set it to being invisible and I'm going to change its properties to that of water. Now I'm gonna to go to the play test and while you can't see it, I'm going to walk around into it and now I can climb this tower like as if I were climbing a ladder. Although you can hear the water sound, so that kind of breaks the immersion a little bit. And now I've successfully managed to climb atop the tower. And as you can hear, there's a whole bunch of metallic sounds. So we've got the proper textures. Although you can hear it being a bit watery, that's because I'm wet, I suppose, in the game. Now I'm looking through the textures and unfortunately there doesn't seem to be a ladder texture unless I'm missing something like that. Now right here I've spawned in a car, but as far as I'm aware, right now unfortunately when you save your custom map and export it to mod.io, it won't really load with your customly spawned objects in the map. Although that should change in the future, I'm not really sure. Once you're done with your map, you can click on export project right here. Then we can return to the hub and we can close the editor. Now when I click on play, as you can see my custom map has shown up on my single player option right here. And I can click on play once again. And yeah, my map has now been added into the game. As you guys can see, the skybox looks to be a bit red. I was messing around with it in the map editor, but I couldn't really see the redness while choosing the playtest. So that's a little glitch or bug that needs to be fixed. But yeah, in general, this is a map that you can now play for yourself. And so guys, with that, I believe I've covered the basics of map making in GoBox. There are some more complex tutorials that can be taught for this, I believe, like such as, you know, adding custom textures and stuff. but. I don't really know how to do that. Click here to see how to install mods for GoBox. So I've been Jazif, you've been my audience, thank you for watching and goodbye.